We are all related. And when I say all, I mean every single life form. We all have a place somewhere on the great phylogenetic tree. All the diverse and extraordinary adaptations and artifacts we exhibit are a function of the complex evolutionary processes that life has followed. The connections, the differences, and the similarities define us. Understanding the mechanisms that drive evolutionary biology is essential. These processes underpin the diversity we see around us. Let's start by unpacking a simple question. What do we mean by evolution? This is ASU. When most people think about evolution, they think of Charles Darwin and the survival of the fittest. Darwin is well known for coming up with a mechanism of evolution that explains the diversity of life, natural selection. However, there are more forces that drive evolution and natural selection is just one of them. The simplest definition of evolution is change over time. To be more precise, it is genetic changes over time. If I dye my hair pink, that is a change over time, but my offspring will not be born with pink hair. In evolutionary biology, when we talk about changes over time, we mean changes from one generation to the next. So what drives these changes? Well, let's start with natural selection. The way that natural selection works is that not everyone is able to contribute equally to the next generation. That's simply impossible. It would mean that each species would grow exponentially and we would quickly run out of food and space. So there is competition for survival and for reproduction. And only the genes of those who are able to make it through this fierce competition for survival and for reproduction are represented in the next generation. So if an organism has a trait that would increase its survival chances, so for instance, a moth with a slightly darker color that would help it blend into its dark environment, it is more likely to survive predation. The moths who have this darker color are more likely to survive and reproduce than the lighter colored moths. So the gene for darker color is then expected to be slightly more represented in the next generation than the gene for lighter colors. However, as I said before, there are other mechanisms that lead to evolutionary change too. Since evolution is simply genetic changes over time, this could be driven by naturally occurring mutations that lead to new variants in a population. It could also be driven by migration. For instance, when we have new black moths fly into a lighter colored moth population and mate with those lighter colored moths, we have evolution happening due to migration. Evolution can also be driven by genetic drift. The easiest way to define genetic drift is evolution by chance. If darker moths just happen to reproduce more one generation than lighter moths, but it had nothing to do with being more adapted, it was just pure luck, we see more darker moths the next generation, not because of natural selection, but because of genetic drift. One of the key challenges for evolutionary biologists is to figure out whether evolution is happening, and if so, what was the driving factor behind it? The phenomenal diversity of our planet has been driven by evolutionary change. To adapt, to succeed, to sustain or move between different environments and under different sorts of pressures. The variation we see is also a library of opportunity for the evolutionary biologist. It represents an exhaustible number of ways to study the processes of evolutionary change. By understanding where we come from, we can also begin to understand where we are going. This was ASU. Thanks for watching.